Senators Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer say they've drafted the best bill in their 40 years in government. So you know it's going to be a steaming pile of turd that does not help the American people. Former White House Press Secretary Kaylee McEnany shares how Donald Trump can win the presidency and whom he should make vice president. I have to say her idea is interesting and brilliant. The Texas border battle continues as Texas shuts the border down and proves it is helpful only to have the swamp rats in Washington, D.C. Uh, demand that he allow even more illegal immigrants across the Texas border immediately. Thank you guys so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out, so thank you so much. Earlier today, I released an exclusive interview with conservative talk radio host, Dennis Prager, where we talk about the true state of the United States of America, where he sees the country going. It's an incredible deep dive into what I believe was a great conversation. I'll make sure to link it at the end of this video or just go to YouTube and search my most recent video. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell has just confirmed that the Fed will likely not drop interest rates in the month of March. During an interview with 60 Minutes, Jerome Powell stated, the prudent thing to do is just to give it some time and see the data continue to confirm that inflation is moving down to 2% in a sustainable way. In regards to a timeline for a rate cut, all Jerome Powell could offer is that his committee will probably not be confident enough to start cutting rates in March. Even though rates may not be dropping as soon as we thought, Powell did hint at the fact that they will likely drop later this year. My guess is he's been instructed to drop them just before the 2024 presidential election. High inflation coupled with high interest rates are really hurting middle-class America and lower income families. Credit card debt is now at $1.08 trillion and rising. Contrast that with the Trump years where people were actually paying down debt and saving at a higher rate than they had in the previous 10 years. Matt Schultz, the head of Lending Tree, says life has simply become too expensive for most people. Wages have flattened out, layoffs have begun, and prices continue to increase. All of this is contributing to higher and higher uh, credit card debt with high interest rate payments. The United States has officially started its retaliatory attacks against Iran-backed militia after three American soldiers were killed. The U.S. Central Command released a statement detailing the attacks, which reads, the facilities that were struck included command and control operations centers, intelligence centers, rockets and missiles, an unmanned aerial vehicle storage and logistics and munitions supply chain facilities of militia group, and there are IRGC sponsors who facilitated the attacks against U.S. coalition forces. In total, the U.S. military dropped 125 bombs in this attack, and it has been reported that at least 40 people were killed, including some civilians. Secretary of Defense General Lloyd Austin claims this is only the start of the response, and the United States will not take this lightly. Needless to say, Russia was not happy with the news as they are in relationship with Iran. Russia's foreign ministry spokesman, Maria Zakharova, claimed the attack was just more proof that America is aggressive and does not care about breaking international law. In response, Russia has called an emergency meeting with the UN Security Council that is set for later today. I find it funny that Russia says the United States can't attack other countries as they continue their attack on the country of Ukraine. With this being said, we may hear directly from Vladimir Putin himself regarding many topics on the Tucker Carlson show. According to Russian news media, Tucker Carlson has been in Moscow for the last three days and has been spotted in different locations such as the Bolshoi Theater. 
This has led to rumors claiming that Tucker Carlson may be attempting to interview Russian President Vladimir Putin. While this may seem unbelievable, Tucker Carlson has attempted to interview Putin in the past, but was persuaded not to as he was alerted that the NSA was spying on him. While on the Full Send podcast, Tucker Carlson recounted how he got a phone call from someone in Washington, D.C., who knew of his plans. He stated, how would you have known that? I haven't told anybody. I mean anybody. Not my brother, not my wife, nobody. All right, now on to the Texas border uh, battle that's going on between Joe Biden, who wants illegals to flood the country, and Governor Greg Abbott of Texas, who's trying to defend his state and also the nation. Late last night, the Senate finally released the details of the new border bill that I've been talking about coming out. While lawmakers are still combing through the 370-page bill, it's already abundantly clear this thing will not pass. Not only does the new legislation allow roughly 5,000 illegal immigrants into the country every day, but an emergency can only be declared if 8,500 cross the border in a single day. Furthermore, in the event that an emergency declaration is declared, President Biden reserves the right to null the declaration for a period of 45 days. 45 days. This is a major loophole. As soon as the border is rushed with over 8,500 people, President Biden will just say, I'm going to put this emergency situation on the back burner for the next 45 days, and let's just see what happens, which would allow illegals to pour into the country at higher rates than we have even right now. So this bill is terrible. Now, in addition to allowing huge numbers of people to enter the country, the new bill uh, Chuck Schumer says he loves gives $14 billion to Israel so they can continue to attack Gaza and $60 billion to Ukraine so that we can continue to pay for all of their government systems, including all of their gov government worker pensions. Now, remember when Donald Trump wanted $5 billion to build the wall and the Democrats literally lost their mind? Now they give away our tax money for war like it's candy to school-aged children. I, for one, am done with war. I don't want our money going there. Imagine that money being spent on improving our schools, life for our children. There's so many other things that could be done, but I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Now, Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson claimed the bill will be dead on arrival if it makes it to the House. He stated, I've seen enough. This bill is even worse than we expected and won't come close to ending the border catastrophe the president has created. As the lead Democrat negotiator proclaimed, under this legislation, the border never closes. Democrat Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer had a much different tone, championing Senator Mitch McConnell's role in helping him draft the bill. Chuck Schumer stated, I have never worked more closely with Leader Mitch McConnell on any piece of legislation we have done on this. Look, at this point, McConnell may as well become a Democrat. When Schumer says he's worked closely with McConnell, he simply means that McConnell abandoned his Republican principles and gave in to Democrat demands. When one side is overjoyed, you know that the other side is likely completely devastated and given up. Now, I don't know. Maybe I'm seeing this wrong, but I just feel like Senator Mitch McConnell has sold out the United States of America, the Republican Party, and the, and the state of Texas. This Texas border situation will be out of control if Greg Abbott gives up the fight against Joe Biden. But despite this simple truth, House Speaker Mike Johnson is now being accused of being Trump's puppet due to his recent comments where he admitted to speaking with him at length regarding the Texas border battle. During an interview on NBC News, Johnson was forced to confront this accusation, but vehemently denied it. He stated, he is not calling the shots. I am calling the shots for the House. That's our responsibility. 
and I have been saying this far longer than President Trump has, with both Republican and Democrats becoming increasingly critical of the flaws at the border, TV personality Dr. Phil has joined the fight by taking a trip to the border and highlighting the deadly effects of fentanyl. While there, Dr. Phil bashed the Biden administration by stating, and what about our vice president, Kamala Harris? Did you know she's our country's immigration czar? Guess how many times she's been to the border? Once. More than 6 million illegal immigrants have crossed the Texas southern border in just three years. That's more than the population of 33 states in this country. So he's calling out Kamala Harris, saying that she is pathetic. She, this is a dereliction of duty. This is an impeachable offense. But are the Democrats going to get away with it? Likely, because Republican leaders are weak. Now, Texas Governor Greg Abbott appeared on Fox News to discuss the effectiveness of the barbed wire and what it's achieved as it's been implemented on the border. While some Democrats have argued a wall or barbed wire doesn't work, Abbott stated, get this, the area we have occupied this park in Eagle Pass, Texas, that we put up razor wire, there used to be three or 4,000 people crossing that area a day. For the past three days, we have averaged three people crossing that area. The point is, if we put up resistance, we show that we can secure the border. Joe Biden should not be stopping that. How about that? So no, no, uh, no, nobody defending the border. And we're getting 4,000 people a day. They put up the barbed wire. They bring in the military, the National Guard. They tell Border Patrol to stand down, that they're now taking over defending the Texas border. And what happens? Three illegal immigrants show up. Three compared to 4,000. Wow. I mean, to me, that just is proof that what they are doing in Texas is working and we need to continue to support them. Now, despite rumors, former President Donald Trump has just asserted in an interview that he has in fact not chosen who his vice president will be yet. During a new interview on Sunday Morning Futures, Trump admitted that he will not be making the final decision anytime soon, but did say he has some good options, including Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina and South Dakota's Governor Kristi Noem. When asked what the decision will come down to, Trump claimed he has to believe his vice president would be a good president because no matter who you are, things happen. Now, this is really interesting because just 30 days ago, Donald Trump was saying the vice president doesn't matter. So obviously, somebody is in his ear consulting and counseling him that it does in fact matter and who he picks will probably decide whether he's elected or not and the fate of the country for the next 12 years. Now, check this out. Trump's former press secretary, Kaylee McEnany, threw out some interesting ideas today. She pointed out that if Donald Trump can take the state of Virginia, he has enough votes to dominate the electoral college vote and send Biden back to Delaware on permanent vacation. Basically, if he can pick up Virginia, then he's going to win the election. Now, Kaylee McEnany also pointed out that Trump could make a move to name Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin as his vice president. Glenn Youngkin is a super pro-America, pro-parental rights advocate that won Virginia by standing up for the Constitution and telling parents, you have the right to know what your children are being taught in schools. And he won big. Now, I think Kaylee McEnany might be onto something big, and I'll continue to let you know what happens. Now, for me, this is very reassuring. I've been saying Donald Trump needs to choose wisely who his vice president will be because that person has a real chance at becoming president for four to eight years. Can you imagine if conservative values took back the White House for 12 or more years? We would be living in a completely different country. 
Some of you may cheer that and others may cringe, but the reality is the country would be different with 12 years of conservative values. Now, let me know, please, who do you think should be the vice presidential pick? And does it really matter? I think it does, but I want to hear from you, not from me. All right. Now, during that same interview, Donald Trump was also once again asked to address his recent comments regarding becoming a dictator. Trump stated, I'm not going to be a dictator. That was said in jest. Now, back in 2020, I think Trump made some big mistakes by failing to clarify some of his comments. So I'm glad that he has now decided to clarify that he is not going to become a dictator because you say that and the Democrats will use that soundbite all over the internet all day long. And you can bet that uh, it's going to come up, even though he said it in jest. If you go back and watch the clip, he, of course, said it in jest. Now, this is my update for today. As I know more, I will definitely come on and share more with you. Before you go, I want to remind you that you are amazing. Thank you so much for stopping by, supporting the channel. It's hours and hours of research to bring you guys the news and the truth of what's really going on in our country. Now, I want to say hi to you guys before I head out to have dinner with my family. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Penny. Hi, Terry. Cinda, Melvin, Glenn, Jason. Let's see, Tucker Carlson, Vivek Ramaswamy. Vivek will be the border king. I believe it. That guy knows the Constitution, and he's got a he, he's got a spine. He would definitely do that. Keep up the great news. I love your channel. You're amazing. No, you are. You're amazing. All right, Dano, Christopher, Kimberly, Anna, Mama Goodwin, Matt Knowles, Corey. Let's see. Thanks for the show. Thanks, Stephen. Love the podcast. Thanks. You do an amazing job. Maggie from Massachusetts. Hi, Stephen. Hello, Magpie. That's or Magpie, I guess, is what it says here. Say Corey. Hi, Corey. All right. Trump and Tucker. Trump Vivek. Trump Gnome. Trump Lake. I'm guessing, Lynn, you're saying any of those combinations would absolutely crush it. All right. Hey, thank you guys so much. Uh, I love all of you. Be safe. Uh, keep your heads up. We're going to get through this. Better, brighter days are ahead. Have a great evening.